Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Woods and where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be going over part two of our three-part series in our DIY COA series. Uh, this is where we're going to show you some tips and tricks on how to oil your instrument. Last week we did our clean and this week we're going to be doing the oil. Uh, before we get to that, I do have a hashtag for you that is keep my sax clean. Make sure you put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023. And the one that's coming up immediately is on June 26th. That is our basics done right for saxophone. That is going to be a four-day intensive in-person course with our professor Ryan Walker. Uh, and he's going to be showing a select group of students how to really get into the basics of saxophone repair. So whether you are a hobbyist, a uh, teacher, a uh, professional musician, amateur musician, a professional technician, maybe your specialty is strings or brass, uh, this is a chance for you to come down and really get into everything that you need to know in kind of a crash course style. Uh, and so that you can head into the next season uh, with a new set of skills and earn more money. Yes. Uh, Who doesn't love that? Uh, I, I would love some. If you got it. some, yes. I'll take it. <laughs> so make sure you take that hashtag, keep my sax clean, put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up. And the winner that we have for this week is just a first name. Joe. Joe, you are the winner. Uh, congratulations. I assume Go, you're... Joe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and I will get you your discount code. Ryan, we did our clean last week. I yes. Know, I know you have a couple of cleaning trip, uh, trips. Yes. Kind of, yeah, they kind of overlap. You know, okay. there's a little bit of cleaning with the oiling and the oiling and the adjusting. So it's the C, C, C? O, A. So, so we're on the O part, which is the oil. So part. before we get into the O, O, O section, yes. can we go over a couple of cleaning tips for, say, what we didn't go over last week? Absolutely not. No, yes, we're going to go over a couple cleaning tips on a couple of the things. So you saw us last week. We were out by the sink. Uh, we talked about cleaning the body of the instrument. We took all the keys off. We yes. had just the body in the sink, and that's where we use just regular Dawn dish soap. It's great for degreasing. Uh, it's not going to harm delicate lacquers. Um, just that in a scrub brush. We also talked about how we got to make sure that you dry it off completely. Okay, very important, especially if you have some steel parts, if you leave your pivot screws in or your uh, needle springs, you want to make sure that you dry those, those steel parts off correct, uh, appropriately because you don't want them to rust. So before we get to that, don't, sorry to interrupt you, can we go over the tools? Were you about to get to the tools? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, calm down. <laughs> but the next thing we did was the keys was cleaning those off and we wiped them down with some denatured alcohol. We used just some solvent on it. Um, do not use acetone. Acetone is a little too aggressive for a lot of lacquers. So we just wipe down the keys on the outside because we don't want to submerge them with the pads in it. Okay. Uh, the next thing we did, we did talk a little bit about cleaning the inside of the hinge tube, but I will talk a little bit more about that, which is I do use a solvent for that, either denatured alcohol, sometimes acetone. Uh, but what I'm doing is using a little bit of denatured alcohol on a pipe cleaner, and then I'm just putting that into the hollow hinge tubes. And this would be, again, part of the clean preparation for your oiling. Okay. okay. So using that, clean that off. I will even use the actual hinge rod itself with a little bit of oil. We'll talk a little bit about, more about the oils later. Again, this is kind of that follow-up to the clean. And I will use the rod with some oil. I will then wipe it down with a rag, and then even to take a fresh, clean pipe cleaner and get all that old oil and grease. So again, that's kind of just the refresher on the cleaning. We clean the body, we clean the keys, we wiped them down, we clean the inside of the hinge tubes. Now we're ready for the full oil. Okay. Yes. So now we can- Now we're ready for the tools. So let's go over the tools for this job. Good. Excellent. All right, here we are. A couple things. Uh, you're going to need some screwdrivers. Uh, anything will work. Eyeglass screwdrivers, the small electronic screwdrivers. You don't have to have these nice fancy Music Medic screwdrivers. Um, so screwdrivers for disassembly and reassembly. Pair of pliers is also nice. I prefer the duckbill parallel. Um, a spring hook for reattaching your springs. You never know when you need some tweezers. 
okay? Grabbing onto small parts. Um, this is a handy thing to have, and this is, you can use this at any point in time. This is just a duster, little brush, kind of a makeup brush, and you can use this in between your COAs. You can dust off your keys, get all the, you know, the case fuzz off. So this is a nice thing to have, plus it is good too clean your keys with that. Um, let's see, I have for my organizational skills, I have a screw block, and this is for keeping uh, keeping track of my pivot screws, which is why there are two holes per key. Um, bonus ah. tip, make sure you keep your top one separate from your bottom one. Don't mix them up, okay? If this one comes out of the top, put it back in the top post. If that one comes out of the bottom post, put that back in the bottom post. But you can see, you can have this, or you can also have a rod block, and this would be one for your solid rods. Okay. Uh, and you can see how I have those in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give them a bonus tip now, which is anytime I put a rod into a rod block, whether you have a nice one like, like this from Music Medic, or whether you have a just a 2x4 with holes drilled in it, I put it so that the thread side is facing up. Okay, There's a weak port part right here. Okay, if I put that in like so, and I accidentally bump this rod, I could bend the thread. So I always put them with the thread side up. Okay. okay. This also allows me to get a little bit of oil, and I'll tend to use the high viscosity, which is the thicker stuff, and I just put a little dab on the threads of whatever rods. And this is just a little bit of extra insurance. That, that oil is going to slowly drip down. It's going to make sure it covers the threads, which is very, very important. You don't want those threads to seize up in a post. So, very good. So bonus, I, bonus. Tip. And Ryan, I like that makeup brush. I know that we sell a version of that. Yes, this is, I think, from... Oh. I have a receipt for it, I swear. Okay, cool. Uh, but I'll, no, put yeah. a, I'll put a link to that below, because I haven't seen us use that in a video uh, yes. yet. Yeah, plus it's good for me at applying a little bit of very nice. rouge. So... All, All right. right, so those are our tools. Uh, any other materials to go over? I think I talked about the oils, the, the Ultimax oils, the three different viscosities, low, medium, and high, and they all have their uses. I do use all of them. And then we also have our greases, which are the uh, pivot and roller lubricant, which I'll show you applications for this. And then I also have my cork grease. Uh, and then those also come in easy, dispensable syringe applicators as well. So I think that's all the tools. Okay, very That's good. I'm very good, very good. Let's start with oiling the springs, shall yeah. we? Yeah, so even before we start oiling the keys and reassembling it, if you've watched a couple of our other videos we've done for Wednesday Wisdom, we did an oiling one. Springs are something that is very, very overlooked as far as the maintenance of saxophones. And this is something players can do, right? But when you have everything apart, all the keys are off, it's much, much easier to see all your springs and all the locations of them. So I'm going to show you my trick. And again, I've done this on, on a couple of videos in the past. But it's still a good trick. It's still a good trick and it's out there. You got you to gotta search for yep. it. But I call it the candy cane trick, which again, my joke is I'm great at holiday parties with my candy cane trick. So I take a, there it is right there, a pipe cleaner and I just bend it like a very weird candy cane. It was maybe in your stocking over the fire, the fire was on. It just kind of got whoop, squished there a little bit. Uh, and then I take the high viscosity oil. So this is the thicker of the key oil. And I just put it right in the crook. Right in the crook. Right, put it right in the crook of that candy cane. So said no one ever except for right now. <laughs> um, made up a sentence. There you go. So my springs right here, okay, both of these are the blue needle springs. I am just going to hook that candy cane crook right over top and that just allows me to apply that oil the reason why i like to use the high viscosity is because it's a much thicker oil and and my thinking is with it being a thicker oil it won't evaporate as much it won't dissipate as much and it does tend to stick to these parts a little bit better so now i have all the keys off imagine if you will i'm going to go in oil apply oil to all the exposed springs. You can do this with the keys already on, but it just makes it a little bit tougher. You can see there's a spring right here. I can kind of still slide that in there. Okay. But it just makes it a little bit easier with all the keys are off. So that's oiling springs. There's one other thing. One other thing to oil on here. Again, often oh. overlooked. Um, so we've oiled our springs on the body is the guides for our flat spring. So I'm, here's my palm key D. I've taken it off. This little flat spring right here has to ride against something on the body. We need a little bit of lubrication there. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take my pivot and roller lubricant, which is this one right here, which is a little bit thicker, and I just 
put a little bit right on that flat spring cradle. Or you can apply a little bit to the bottom of the flat spring. And then you just reassemble eventually when it's time. So those are a couple other areas that are often overlooked okay. when oiling up the saxophone. So, uh, uh, Ryan, what about the octave key spring? Is that going to also apply on the neck? Would you also ah uh, yes? It? Yep. I don't okay. have a neck in here, but you would do the exact same thing. Where every place where you have sometimes side keys have flat springs if it's an old vintage horn, mm. you know. But yes, you would apply it any any place where you have that little bit of friction, metal against metal. And in case we have steel going against brass, the brass is going to lose every time. It's a softer metal, so it really wants to dig in. If you have a little bit of lubrication in there, it makes it a lot easier. Nice. So All there right, we let's, go. Let's do hinge rods next. Yes. Even before we do hinge rods, one thing I know we've talked about, Rich, is oiling up our uh, rolls. <laughs> oh, yes. Yep. Those, so, yes. Right here. A lot of times you can just kind of take your finger and just... You can hear a little bit of a click where my, my roller kind of clicks back and forth on this key. It is possible to oil those and get those feeling quiet, and it also prevents that rod from eventually seizing in there. So I'm going to undo the roller rod that comes out like so. And for this, I'm going to use the pivot and roller lubricant. It's right there in the name, folks. If you can't see it, bring your phone close to your face. Closer. There it is, pivot and roller lubricant. So I'm going to use this, and this is, let's go to the pivot and roller cam. You ready? Look at this. Oh my goodness, who wants a Cadbury egg? Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's good. It's, yep. it's 11 in the morning here on the that, East Coast. It's that's good. right, it's breakfast of champions. Oh. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of this stuff, and this is our pivot and roller lubricant. It is a little bit thicker. It's very, very viscous. It's consistency of like honey. So you can see I'm just going to use just a dab. I like to put right on the threads. So Ryan, you dip your rod directly into the container? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's the only way to go. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my rod into the actual roller. And you can see, just kind of spin it around as I put it in there. That disperses the oil. Or sorry, the grease in this case. I'm using grease. And then I can go ahead and reassemble my key. Now, what if the if you're a player that likes a loose roller, not a, not a loud roller, but a loose roller, and I mean like a, a good spin? A nice spin. Uh, can you thin the grease out? Or? You can. You can. I don't even know why you asked. You know. You know this, right? Yes, well, but no. You are going to use a little bit of whatever viscosity of oil to kind of thin it out. For If I'm going to thin out this stuff, I might use like the... Maybe the medium. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is the nice thing about this Ultimax, the, the oils and the greases. You can kind of combine them and make your own slurry, as I call it. Mm -hmm. um, Captain Ryan's slurry. <laughs> slurry sauce. Patent pending on that. Well, and, and, the, and the reason that you can do that is because Ultimax is chemically inert. It's not yeah. going to react with any other oils or greases that you already have on your instrument. And it's also not going to react with each other. Yes. So they're completely safe to use in any combination. Absolutely. Okay, so, so we've done the rollers. We've done the rollers. Now we can work on oiling up the key, or oiling and greasing up the key. So okay. I'm going to use my C and the E flat for this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cleaned off rod. Remember, we cleaned it off. We wiped it down. We used some of the 3M polish paper. We, we uh, prepped the surface. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of cork grease, okay, which seems a little different. I don't really like using the pivot and roller lubricant on hinge rods because it's a little too thick. Hmm. I could thin it out with this stuff, but I just find using the cork grease is the right consistency that I'm looking for, especially when I add a little bit of oil to it. Okay, For this, I'm actually going to use the medium. Okay, So I put a little bit of cork grease depth on the threads. I'm going to use a little bit of the medium uh, uh, key oil. And then now what I'm going to do is apply that, even before I assemble, I'm just going to apply that into the hinge tube itself. And as I do that, I spin it around. That disperses my oil and my grease. Sometimes I can go ahead and apply a little bit more like so. And now that I have everything properly oiled, I can go ahead and reassemble. Grab my instrument. So I've oiled my springs. They're good to go. I've oiled my rollers which is much easier to do when the key is off, which is why I did those first. And now I can go ahead and reassemble. 
Now, Ryan, you could also oil the springs after assembly. Why do you choose to do the springs before assembly? It's just easier to see them. And actually, at that time, you can kind of inspect them and make sure that um, they're not loose, they're not rusted or corroded, they're not broken. Um, it just makes it easier to access everything. Okay. So, now that I've got the key on, I'm going to go ahead and reattach my springs and then check everything out. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, nice and no, quiet. Yeah, no more clicking from my rollers. And that's the big test. If you even just take it and just do this, just tap your key. Not to, not like that, just a little tap like this. You can a lot of times hear mm. if your rollers are loose. And keep in mind you have them on the left-hand table as well. But yeah, everything's super oiled. Nice, good to go. We're good for about another you know, six months, eight okay. months, something like that. Very good. So, so Ryan, we've done the rollers. We've done the hinge rods. Yes. We've done the springs. What do we have left? We have the longer pivot key. So this would be a key like this, longer one, like our G key. I have another one here, my high F sharp, my side E key. And these are longer ones, so we don't have an actual hinge rod that goes all the way through. They're solid, okay? and they just have the holes on the end. So for greasing these, really easy if you have one of these guys right here, which is, this is the pivot and roller lubricant. Okay? It's, it's right there on the container. So for the rollers, I'll use this stuff. For the pivot screws, I will also use this stuff. And this is just in our syringe applicator. So all I'm going to do is just put a little bit in the end. Can you like turn so. your hand so they can see that? Because it looks like oh, you're putting oh, it oh, right, oh. it goes right in the It goes right shot. in, let's see, let's see, right there. I insert it right into the end, squeeze a little off, and then you're good to go. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to assemble. Now. One thing I will mention is if we clean the body and you left your pivot screws in, keep in mind, again, you wanted to make sure everything was completely dry, get rid of all that excess moisture, and then you wanted to oil things up. So that means taking your pivot screws out, you know, oiling them up with your, your traditional oils, just kind of like how we did with our pivot screws. Uh, and then when we reassemble everything, making sure everything is properly lubricated. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I will apply just a little bit of key oil to the tip of the pivot screw and then I will back it out and that helps disperse my oil where I need it. So now I can go ahead and assemble. Keep in mind I also did uh, oil my spring here for my G key because again it is much easier to do that when it is completely disassembled. While you're doing that, uh, Mr. Boone some, is asking. For shout outs. Oh, but but do do do. He's asking or she. I, I don't. I'm not sure. But um, are we doing these live or posting these later? We are posting these later, guys. Yes, yes. It's um, live. That's why we did a multiple multiple intro. Yeah. We do a little <laughs> bit of editing and yeah, cut. That's right. Yeah, so. I'm gonna go back and take out the screw up intro. Start and fresh. It'll, it'll be the the good content. Seventh times the charm. <laughs> that's right. So lucky number seven. Also, while I have you guys, um, mm -hmm. if you want to get a sample of Altimax, Ooh. and this would be any of the different viscosities that we have, the low, it. medium, and high, the low, pivot and roller, medium. as well as the <clears throat> cork grease, I have some sample packs. And all you have to do is share this video around uh -huh. and, oh, let me get the other screen. There you go. Too. There they uh, are. Share this video around. Uh, make sure you take that uh, hashtag, put that, keep my sax clean in the comments. Uh, but most importantly, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and I can get you a sample of our Ultimax oils and greases. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. That's a good deal right there. Yes. <laughs> so sure. I've, I've reassembled my key. Everything's on. Now the only thing left is to reattach my spring. There we are. You were going to notice a noticeable difference. <laughs> notice the noticeable difference like uh, in your key work. It's going to be much, much quieter now that with, you know, that you've oiled it and greased it. Uh, obviously some key fitting would help if, if keys are really, really loose, but uh, obviously oiling and greasing will help as well. And then Ryan, um, yes, this is kind of like a technician style lubrication yes. or, or yep. oiling and greasing. Uh, obviously as players, they can do this themselves. What about just topping off? The key work, can they just take a needle oiler and top off any areas they're unsure about? And then follow-up question, <laughs> which viscosity of the Ultimax do you like to do Ooh. that with? Oh, interesting. Yes. Uh, well, to answer your first question, absolutely. Um, topping it off, adding oil is better than not oiling it 
at all. Uh, we've done a video, I think, of the two different ways. The one where we kind of leave it assembled, we don't take everything off, but we're adding oil to any of those connections. So if I have a post face and the key that rotates against it, I'm going to add a little bit of oil there anytime I have friction. Um, so yes, topping it off is fantastic. To answer your second question, Thank your you. second part of that, I would tend to use the medium viscosity. Okay, it's kind of right in the middle. Um, if you have an instrument, maybe let's say an old vintage horn that maybe the key work is not as tight, okay. I would use the high viscosity. Let's say you have a smaller instrument that you just want to top it off. Maybe the key works a little bit tighter. Flute, oboe, piccolo. Mm -hmm. You can see this stuff, the low viscosity is a little bit more watery, liquidy, yes. thinner. I guess, as it were. Uh, but yeah, for topping it off, this is great. And those little needle oilers are fantastic for getting into those tight areas. Okay. So yeah, so topping it off is way better than not oiling it out at all. Okay, very good. Yes. Well, Ryan, thank you for that excellent demonstration. You're welcome. Everybody, you. make sure you're, you're very welcome. Make sure you take uh, Keep My Sax Clean, put that in the comments below. Uh, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com. I'll be able to get you your free sample of Ultimax oils and greases. Uh, don't forget to sign up for our Basics Done Right course coming up on July, uh, sorry, June 26th. Uh, that's going to do it for now, guys. Next week, we'll be back with the adjustment ah, part three yes. of our COA for DIYers. So uh, make sure that you tune in next week. That's going to do it. And until next time, happy repairing.